Bonjour, bonsoir, dear friends. This is JCB Live, Wine Style. I'm today with all the key pioneers of the history of one of the most amazing states in the world, California. So to welcome them, a French way, of course. Woo! We're going to start where it all started in Burgundy. I'm going to pass the bottle around so they could feel the energy of the past. The Boisset collection has been fascinated by gathering some of the most historical estate in France and, of course, in California. You will see the vision from the first California winery to the first Pinot planted in the Russian River to one of the iconic, fabulous vision of 1881 in the heart of Oakville to, of course, five generations of amazing winemakers in the heart of Napa Valley, to the big innovation of bringing Bordeaux to California in Alexander Valley. So I want to raise my glass to the vision of California, to the vision of all those illustrious visionaries, and of course, to the Boisset Collection for building together, thanks to heritage, history, passion, and willingness to create amazing quality wines, the most incredible portfolio of all time. To personalities, to identities, and to the vision of people who never stop in front of no obstacles. They go beyond, they keep creating, they're audacious. Like the man I met when I was 10 and a half years old. I saw his portrait at Buena Vista Winery. I vibrated of excitement, and my dream was to be like him, coming from Europe and establishing a legacy for the future in fine wines in California. Count, would you please tell us this amazing story that you've created that became the first in California? Jean-Charles Boisset, how pleased I am to be at this table with all of these tremendous winemakers and you, sir, the man who brought me back to life when you acquired historic Buena Vista. Buena Vista, the single most important historic winery in California, and I am overjoyed to tell you about a wine called the Chateau Buena Vista Proprietary Red. This wine fulfills my legacy as I made wine both in Napa and Sonoma, and I always made a blend. Uh, putting a varietal name on a bottle is a modern notion. I always blended different grapes together because by blending we get varied flavors without extensive bottle age. The art of the winemaker is to blend and to be here at this table with these remarkable winemakers you have acquired, John Charles, fills my heart with joy. This beautiful proprietary red wine, 56% from Sonoma County, 44% from Napa County. And the blend is 56% Cabernet Sauvignon, 28% Merlot, 7% Petit Verdot, 5% Zinfandel, 2% Cabernet Franc, and 2% Petit Syrah. Winemaker Brian Maloney, I congratulate you on this tremendous blend, and I think we should all taste. So Count, as we all tasting this magnificent wine, mm. it is the time for you to tell us that all the great varieties that are in this glass you actually brought to the United States. I thank you, Jean-Charles. Yes, indeed, in 1861, I was named an official commissioner of the state of California legislature. I went to Europe on a seven-month adventure and returned 100,000 cuttings about this big of 353 different varieties. All the grapes in this glass and countless other grapes were acquired, brought back, as my dream was not just to make great wine, but to build an industry. And so here we have this proprietary red, the, the fourth wine on the Chateau Buena Vista uh, uh, groupings of wines. We have a gorgeous Chateau Buena Vista Carnero Chardonnay, the Chateau Buena Vista Sonoma Coast Pinot Noir, the famous Chateau Buena Vista Napa Valley Cabernet. And now to honor the blend and the fact that I grew grapes in both counties, we have this 
Chateau Buena Vista, proprietary red wine. What a magnificent history, Count. And beyond all those phenomenal qualities, mm -hmm. you were the first one to build a gravity flow winery as well. Thank you. And the first one to innovate with Method Champenois in your beautiful cellars. Well, I thank you for those kind and true comments, Jean Charles. Yes, indeed. I started Buena Vista 1857, and my Chinese workmen dug the first wine caves in California, 1857, the first and second stone winery buildings, the first gravity flow winery buildings, lo grapes loaded from the back to the road, from the road to the second floor and third floor of the second building, and then the grapes vinified and the wine going down through hoses without pumps because even 160 years ago and going back hundreds of years in Burgundy, it was understood that using pumps to push wine around a winery can bruise the wine, take away some of the flavor. So managing quality, quality, quality all the way in. So we delighted to count the count as part of the family and to have such an amazing continuity. We are all shareholders of your dream count to the point that you've instilled Charles Krug to start making wine in Napa Valley. And as he started, he obviously has many from Yonville to Oakville to San Helena to further. Everybody stopped at the famous 1881 wow, Oldville Grocery. And two families, amazing, started the dynasty of the finest provision and wine store as a wine merchant in the history of the crossroads of Napa Valley. So Thane, I would love for you as our very talented, exceptionally visionary Oakville winemaker that you are, to showcase 1881 and what it represents. Beautiful, thank you, Jean Charles. And Count, it's always hard to go after the first and oldest continually operating winery in California. You're looking very good for your age. I'm, the wine is keeping me healthy. <laughs> the secret to life, right here. Well, thank you. Uh, 1881, what a better segue into Napa Valley, 1881, really at the gateway to Napa Valley, coming in at Oakville grocery so the oldest continually operating grocer in california where you can come and get fresh locally sourced uh, pr uh fine foods and get your locally grown uh, uh hops and your own beer you can get some locally roasted coffee and uh, and really sit down and have a great time before you enter 1881 napa next door so drant and booth really started the building and the whole concept gives you the, it's an homage to the heritage of the Napa Valley. So you're learning about the Count, you're learning about Charles Crew, you're learning about Henry Crabb, and really diving down into the pioneers and people who settled this valley, why they settled those locations, what's unique about those locations, and really opening your eyes to the terroir of all these fantastic sub-AVAs of Napa Valley. And then you get to try the 1881 Napa cab so just as it says right here it's a uh, it's honoring the pioneers of the napa valley this cab is so wonderfully rich it's very unique in in both well in all oak style and composition so what's really defining this this napa cab is the oak so it's american oak this tale of americana so it's american oak which gives you this wonderful uh bourbon toasted vanilla style on the nose it's very rich plush but we're blending it with very, very traditional California varietals. So the composition is actually cab with a little zen. It gives you that nice spice and, and floral note and peppery note. It gives it a, a little more body, along with petite syrah, which is the depth and breadth of this, this cab. It really gives it that, uh, it makes it shoot from the hips, essentially. It's essentially the cab that the all baby grapes want to grow into. They want to become this bottle really a fantastic testament to all the people who settled here. Well, and Thane, thank you so much for such a beautiful mouth-fulling and fulfilling <laughs> temptation. We have as well at, you know, Oakville Wine Merchant 1881, mm -hmm. a museum that really speaks about the history of Napa Valley from each of the AVA, as you've said, and very much of the tools from viticulture, to winemaking, 
to Cooperage, to every step along the way, to really dive into the past and understand the gesture, the movement, similar to Muera Vista, as you need to stop, as your first stop ever to California, and really visit the incredible museum we've crafted as far as the history of wine, the history of California, and wine as well. So two must stop, beautiful red proprietary blend, incredible Cabernet Sauvignon, American oak. Very, very powerful. So to continue the history, we need to go over now the Mykamas Mountain, because our origin being Burgundy, it's essential for us to stress the deep understanding we have of Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, the Burgundy way. However, wanting to really preserve the identity, the personality, and the style of what California has to offer. For that, we teamed up with a great family, the Deloach family, in the heart of the Russian River, in what I call all the time the Rodeo Drive of Pinot and Chardonnay, in that cool climate where Brian Maloney, since inception, since 2003, has been crafted the fabulous wines of the Loach since the moment we set foot in this beautiful area. Let's not forget again that the Deloach family established, you know, the code of sustainable farming as early as the 1980s and of course helped defining the boundaries as well of what we call today the Russian River. So very important again, as you go to every of our winery, there's a deep sense of the sense of place, what we love to call the terroir, and of course the identity, the personality, the passion, and the energy of the people that are really building the future of each of those phenomenal areas. So, Brian. Well, thank you, John Charles. I, I think you have said it so well. I, the Deloche family, really, when they set out to craft these great wines, they found a great historic estate in the center of what would become the Russian River Valley on the Olivet Bench, an area that had been planted to grapevines going back to the pre-prohibition era and they pioneered the planting of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay in that area and then crafted some of the most award-winning and recognized wines as early as the late 1970s and early 1980s prior to then forming that Russian River Appellation that's become world famous throughout the world. It's through the techniques that they used in those vineyards and in their winery, traditional techniques, hand punch downs, native yeast fermentations, and let us not forget the importance of that barrel selection making sure that you're only selecting out the, the, the finest barrels That's it. to craft. Uh, and why do you say the finest? Well, because they're out fucking standing. Oh, ah, good. Yes. No, that's I was feeling the palpitation of my heart accelerating, hoping we would hear the OFS moment. But the crowning achievement really has happened, I think, in the last decade or so with our estate wines and the, the transition of sustainable farming practices, which the Deloche has used, to what we now practice today at all of our estate vineyards throughout the world, which is biodynamic and organic farming. And that has elevated this estate to not only being one of the great wines of the Russian River Valley and of Deloche's history, but really of all Pinot Noirs, I feel, even up there with the great ones of Burgundy. And that is because it represents that specific terroir. You taste the place, you taste the intensity, but you also taste that velvet and that seductiveness and uh, just an aromatics that you just need to keep on going back to. Well, and maybe, Brian, you touched on the barrels and the very intricate kaleidoscope of Coopers we use. What about the open top for manners? Give us a few more details on why those wines are so magnetic. Well, I think, you know, open top fermentation allows the, the nature of the terroir really to live. And it, it, it starts with using these traditional oak vats that were actually shipped over from Burgundy. Uh, and we've been crafting our Pinot Noir by hand in them. But it is taking in the grapes, these hand-picked grapes, picking them cool in the morning, just doing the most gentle of destemming so you have those beautiful whole berries going into the vat. And then letting the native yeast from those berries themselves start that fermentation in a very slow, long process. Utilizing just the, the human power of pijage, the, the punch down or the, the treading of the grapes depending on the, on the vintage to make sure that we're just gently coaxing those flavors and letting them just seep out into the, into the must and then utilizing that basket press after a few weeks to just gently liberate that juice and let it age in some beautiful barrels. And the idea for us is to complement the exercise of what we've done in Burgundy. 
And Brian, maybe you want to touch on that. We're not trying to be burgundy whatsoever. No. We are using the techniques. California is California. And the great thing that Burgundy has given to the rest of the wine world is uh, an inspiration of how to look at vineyards, how to think about wine. And that's what we talk about with our Burgundian techniques is we look at specific places and we want to reveal what flavors that terroir provides. It is not trying to make a Pinot Noir that tastes like Burgundy. This is California. We will never do that. We want to make a Pinot Noir that tastes like our specific little slice of the Olivet Bench. And by utilizing those Burgundian te techniques, those hand punch downs, those native yeast fermentation, and then that extended uh, aging upon the leaves, we're able to really craft and coax out all the potential that wine has. And it is that is what we mean with Burgundian techniques. As we are gathered today around the table, different personalities, different style, different characters, different flavor profile is what we look for. This is what a family is, this is what a collection is. It's really insisting on the diversity. It could be the same grapes, they express themselves differently. And we love to sit down at the table and do those endless tastings, from Côte de Nuit to Côte de Beau to Côte of the Loach, and really enjoy what really makes the world of Pinot and Chardonnay so complex. What I love as well, as Buena Vista does so magnificently well, is the Loach produces that Russian river, Zinfandel as well, cooler climate. Yes, well, where we're located in the center of the Russian river, uh, we, you talked about Rodeo Drive, there is no place better in the world for Zinfandel than the heart of the Russian River Valley. There is a brightness, a freshness, and an exuberance to our Zins that you won't find anywhere else. And I challenge anyone to not be able to put down that glass of Russian River Zin once it's poured for them. It is delicious stuff and exceptionally rewarding, uh, especially when you have a chance to, to enjoy some of the great old vines at, at Deloche we've had the pleasure to work with all the way back to our first vintage in 1975. It must be a pity to have an empty glass. I, I, oh, here we are. <laughs> so after the loach, we had a dream. The dream was to be more American than the Americans. When you love America so much as we do, we have to friend and be part of another family, which is an iconic family. That family has been making wine for five generations in the heart of Napa Valley. I had the pleasure to know the Raymonds for many years. I admired the Raymonds, loved their vision, loved their direction, loved what they had started in Santa Elena and Rutherford. Remember, the French love Rutherford. This is that je ne sais quoi that seduces us every time we come. Obviously, didn't fail with me because I fell in love with Raymond. So, Patrick, tell us about this amazing estate that we've gathered, the practices, the history, and what made that generation so unique. Well, thank you. So Patrick Egan, I'm honored today to represent Raymond Vineyards. We're talking the heart of Napa Valley. And when you talk pioneers of Napa Valley, you have to include the Raymond family as part of that story, really since the beginning. Five generations, as Jean Charles said. And what, uh, Roy Raymond Sr. began his career in 1933 he had the, uh, the foresight to begin in the winemaking career the year after Prohibition. Started in the cellar, cellar at Beringer Vineyards, where, smartly, he met and fell in love with Martha Jane Beringer, bringing his great pedigree in winemaking back even further to celebrate since really the beginning of Napa Valley in 1880, where he learned, really, Frederick Beringer from the Count, and from, of course, his friend up, up the street at Charles Krug. Charles Krug, of course, forgive me. But the Raymond story really began in 1933 at Beringer, Roy Raymond Sr. made the wine for 35 years until in 1969, the winery sold and he said, what are we gonna do to cement our legacy in Napa Valley to begin our future of what Napa Valley is? He found the phenomenal estate that we're sitting at today, 81 acres in the heart of Rutherford, right on the edge of St. Helena. And he said, this is gonna be our family legacy. This is our story where it begins. He planted the vines, he built the winery that surrounds us, he moved his family here. He and his two sons began what began Raymond Vineyards. Their first harvest was in 1974. And we are honored today to present Generations. Generations, as we all know, represents what is the best thing that the Raymond family can produce from this great estate. So we have vineyards both in St. Helena, Rutherford, as well as Oakville, uh, and across the Napa Valley. Together they become what is Generations. This is the finest of the finest. Began as 100% Cabernet Sauvignon, but Stephanie Putnam, our phenomenal winemaker, along with Thane, who works very closely with Stephanie, Philippe Melka, our great winemaking consultant, and of course, Jean Charles styles the blends as well. 
decided that we can introduce a little bit of Petit Verdot, a little bit of Cabernet Franc, depending on the vintage, to see where it goes, and really bring a new French oak style that has a great elegance, a great complexity. I'm sure you're all getting thirsty. Who wants to join me in a little glass of generations, huh? Katie, Katie, Absolutely. come. So we're building a new road as well from Highway 29, so I guess can come and see and be part of Generation at all time. That's right. So Raymond, I can't pass up Generations. You cannot pass up Generations, Brian. I please share. Raymond today, as we know, is over 350 acres throughout, from Jameson Canyon in the south to St. Helena in the north. We make wine in 13, Cabernet Sauvignon, 13 of the 16 AVAs of Napa Valley. Uh, and we have now a great estate which begins on Highway 29. So as you're coming up the highway of the, 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 the what is the great term we just said? The Champs-Élysées. The Champs-Élysées. The, the Fifth Avenue, the Rodeo the Avenue. Boulevard, We're in, the Knights Bridge. It's right here in Raymond Vineyard stands at the, at the beginning of it with this great story of organic farming, of biodynamic farming, of a classic family that has influenced Napa Valley from the very beginning. You have to realize that when the Raymonds were smart enough to begin their family winery, there was only 25 wineries in Napa Valley. Today there are over 550 different wineries in Napa Valley, and none is as great as Raymond Vineyards. And we really believe this is the American identity. This is a classic. This is the Cadillac, as we used to say, of the world in general. And for me, they represent the foundation of this amazing valley. We've expanded, of course, from vineyards, as you explained, to practices. So what most of those wineries have in common is a very keen dedication to organic and biodynamic meat farming. We follow the certification programs because we believe it's great to be audited and to be kept in line so the practices are recognized by most. Number two, we've established as well an amazing program as far as alternative energy. Our wineries are equipped with solar panels, with wastewater management, with drip ir irrigation management. We want to make sure that we use the three R, reduce, reduce, recycle, and re <laughs> reduce, reuse, and recycle, of course. Thank you, Mr. Bavani. You know, the three R's after generation, and you know, the red blend, and of course, the Deloche Estate, and, and the American Oak 1881. Woo! But that's the point, is we want to make sure that we have a common ethic, a sense of excellent, that brings us together. So we went from, obviously, the foundation, Sonoma Napa, the beginning. We continued with Oakville, which is the iconic Napa Valley destination. We then crossed to the Russian River, the Green Valley, all the wonderful AVAs of cool climate Chardonnays and Pinot. We went to the Top Gun in Napa Valley, Raymond Vineyards. We need to go to our friends in Bordeaux and to go to Cathy's vision to continue the dream of a great man, Mr. Chip Leith, who abandoned his family banks of Colorado and decided on a Harley Davidson to move west and to continue his dream. So Katie, tell us all about the first and the beginning of a great era. Absolutely, Jean-Charles. Well, we can't speak to the pioneers of California winemaking without talking about Chip Leith. Um, so we're back in Sonoma County, and um, although, as Brian and the Count mentioned, there have been vineyards planted in Sonoma County for over a century, really essential to the history of Sonoma County winemaking. But modern viticulture in Sonoma County really kicked off in the 70s, and up in Alexander Valley, where Chip Leith in the mid-70s purchased almost 300 acres to um, establish his own ranch. And he traveled in Bordeaux prior to that and really fell in love with the art of Bordeaux blending and thought, this is something that I can bring to California and explore what that, um, that balance of varieties blended together can create a, a, a greater whole um, as opposed to the individual variety. So, in the mid-70s, in the Alexander Valley, he was one of the pioneers planting vineyards um, alongside Robert Young and um, Rodney Strong and areas and other pioneering wine growers. And so um, by 1982, um, along with Bill Arbios, his winemaker, he was producing his first wines and um, very much interested in that Bordeaux style of tradition of blending. Um, so much so that by 1988, um, the Meritage was born. And so he teamed up with other uh, growers and 
winemakers in the region to establish the Meritids Association. So this was to honor and recognize the Bordeaux blending in California. So it was establishing standards and ensuring that we were producing wines according to um, standards. So only using the noble Bordeaux varieties, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Malbec, and Petit Bordeaux. And to this day, I'm super excited to continue that tradition of blending. I love blending as a winemaker. I taste through all of the different barrels and my options, and my blend is a little different every year. It depends on what the vintage brings me and what uh, I feel intuitively is the best balance. And I love having those tools to work with. And the Noble Bordeaux varieties are so beautifully balanced with each other. So I always include all five of those varieties. Um, in recent years, I've very much had a bit of an affinity for a little bit more Petit Verdot in the blend. Um, definitely always have Cabernet Sauvignon as well as the other three varieties. So the Leaf Meritage, it's not Meritage, I'm sure all. It is Meritage. It is an American it. word that was invented to honor this blend. It is not a French word. So that's a fun fact. And well, you must and pronounce it correctly. This is very important, Katie. What you're saying is we're here to defend put forward, not even Bordeaux style anymore, we need to call them California style, because this is a California blend. Mm -hmm. And as much as we used to say Bordeaux, we used to use California now, Sonoma or Napa. And this is, I think, the example of the alchemy of those grapes together can create something so phenomenal, much better than the parts themselves. And I think this is the point here is really all those little notes that you so delicately and with so much charisma here put together are magic and this is a phenomenal wine tell us a little bit about this great presentation as well because still silk screen gold on the package oh yes this beautiful gold silk screen reflection uh, this is the classic Leaf Meritage package. So I love presenting this to uh, people that have been familiar with this wine for decades. We have maintained this beautiful presentation and um, it really harkens to uh, people ha having a very solid memory and, and uh, an affinity for this wine. It is a wine that evokes um, memories and people from the 80s and 90s when this was a benchmark wine for this style of blending. Well, and this was, yes, still is. And it still, still is. is. Many people still came, is. of course, because when you have success, which is wonderful, and specifically in America, which we love, is this market economy that creates constant, audacious innovation. Many people imitate Leith Winery and Leith Estate, and many people introduce great wines as well. And which is so good to see under your tutelage and everybody's energy, this winery is still really shining in the world and still showing what Alexander Valley, what Sonoma has to offer. So congratulations. Dear friends, what a fun time to be together. I want to engage everyone in the world of wine, never to forget where we come from. It's so easy to fall into the habits of saying what we're doing or what we will be doing. It's important so much to recognize the Count, to recognize 1881 Oakville and the founders of this amazing town, the Deloach family, the Raymond family, obviously Leith Estate, and to think about where we come from, to be proud of our heritage, and I say that as the Frenchman, I've never been more proud of Burgundy, from the monks to today, of Beaujolais from the 1800s to today, from the Rhone Valley, as far as the Roman influence, from the south of France, as far as the Greeks and the amphitheater of the Mediterranean. It's so exciting together to build the history of the future. America is a dream place. California is the foundation of the finest wines in America. So I would like to raise my hand to the United States of America that is welcoming the best palates in the world and making the best wines for the future. Cheers! <laughs>